All right, so today we're gonna to start off by making a floating action button. Now, those are those little things you see in the bottom right corner of applications and you click on them. They usually are used to add things and we're gonna use that button to create workouts instead of putting that button all the way up here. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding workout progressions. Uh, or what I mean by that is after you do a workout, you should increase the amount of work or the uh, amount of weight you do the next workout. So we're gonna go through how you can increase that or basically create a workout plan. All right, so let's jump into the code for the floating action button. So to start off, we're gonna create a new component in our UI here, which I'm gonna abbreviate FAB for fab floating action button. And I'm going to use our react hook snippet. And I'm gonna say our, our uh, style snippet as well. And here we're going to say fab. And the first thing is we're going to have a touchable opacity. And the touchable opacity is just so we can click on it. And this will be the circle itself. And then inside of the circle, we're going to have some text. In our case, we're just going to have a plus sign. Um, and then I'm just going to import that from React Native. So now I'm going to pass in the styles. So I'm going to say style.fab. And then here I'm going to say style styles.text. So we'll create a text style as well. Now for the text, we'll start with that first because it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, for the most part, we're just going to say font size 18 or something like that. And then for the uh, touchable opacity, we're going to do this in pieces. So I think the first thing we want to start with is getting it located on the screen. I'm going to give it like a width of 40, a height of 40. And then I'm going to say background color so we can see what it looks like. We'll just make it pink. Um, and then we're gonna do position absolute. And then I'm gonna position it at the bottom 10 pixels away and from the right 10 pixels away. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. Um, oh, we need to actually render it. So let's go to our workout history and render it at the bottom. So let's say fab. Render that and see what it looks like. Um, all right, does not match. I think my disk here got messed up, so I'm just going to delete it and run yarn watch again to just recompile it and give it a refresh. Oh, you know what? I think when I do that, I'm going to have to restart the uh, client as well. All right, so what I expect. Uh, for this is at the bottom we should have see like a little pink square so there we go cool now I notice it's not really 10 pixels from the bottom and the reason for that is our view that's the entire page is not flexing so I'm gonna create a style for it to have it flex so I'm gonna say container flex one and then this outermost style I'm gonna say styles dot container so now this thing's going to be the entire page and so this can be 10 pixels away from the bottom because we need that outer container to take up the whole page all right so and we can see we can click on it as well next thing is we want this to be uh, circular so we can use the same tactic as we did with the other circles and say border radius and half of the width slash height which in this case would be 20 so now we have a circle and then really the last piece of this is to make it, uh, ooh, I think we did in our card, is to add the shadow to it. So I'm going to copy these three properties or these four properties that we used in our card to give it the shadow. So shadow color and then some properties on the shadow. And now we have a pretty nice looking button there. Uh, the only other thing, and by the way, how this works is it kind of is floating above everything, right? So you can see it. Uh, it kind of... I don't know if we should have it so where it's kind of like over the scroll. So maybe we should uh, push it to the right like 20 pixels and do 20 pixels off the bottom too. Be more like there. That might be better. Anyway, you'll notice the button's going to be floating over the content. All right. Uh, and then the, really the last thing is to like get this plus sign centered in the middle there. So we're going to say align items center justify content center. 
All right, now we have our plus. Now the plus to me, maybe this is just an optical illusion. Looks like it's not dead center. It might be to the left and right a little bit. So if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of margin on the text to the left and right to push it to so like margin left, two pixels, margin bottom, two pixels, and that'll kind of push it a little bit. Um, and I think this looks a tad more centered in my opinion, but uh, it could just be an optical illusion. All right, so basically this button here, we've now created a nice stylized one and we can click on it. Uh, it's gonna do what our create workout button does up there. So uh, we can go ahead and remove that from our workout history. So let's see what that was doing. I'm gonna just copy the on press for that button and I'm gonna put that in the on press of this. So we need to add an on press. That way we can, this works. And uh, we don't need this watch, man. I just had that on my clipboard. All right. And uh, get rid of that. And we're gonna now in our props in the fab, say on press, and pass that to the opacity. So now what should happen is I click on this, it should take me to a workout page. Now, we're gonna work on that next is what happens when that plus sign is pressed. So first off, we don't wanna just push on exercises every single time. If they're already in the middle of a workout, we just can take them to the workout instead of creating a new workout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our workout store. And, uh, oh, by the way, you guys just saw me do something uh, that might've been confusing what just happened. So I navigated to the workout store the way I did that. I should explain that is I hit command or I guess control probably on windows. And then I hovered over this variable and I can click on it and it'll tell me where it came from. So you notice I clicked it once, it took me to the root store and I hit command, click again on the workout store and that's how I navigated to where the heck this came from. So that's another way I, I commonly navigate besides just using the folder tree here. Um, all right, so yeah, so I'm gonna add a computed property on this. So I'm gonna say computed and I'm just gonna say has current workout. And this is going to be a Boolean. We're just gonna return this dot current exercises dot length. And uh, this is going to be a Boolean. So I'm gonna cast it to a Boolean using the not sign twice. So that that'll cast this number to a Boolean. So basically if it's zero, it's gonna be false. If it's larger than zero, it's gonna be true. And all I'm doing is I'm checking if there's some values in current exercise. So now what I can do is if root store dot workout store dot has current workout, we want to do this, or I guess the opposite. So if there's not a workout. So what's gonna happen is we're not gonna push on exercises unless um, they're not in a workout currently. And so the way we know if they're not in a workout is if that's blank. So uh, did I ruin something? Oh yes, I forgot to add the get property. So we're just going to add the git name to that. Uh, and then that allow us to access it like we are here, where we don't have to call it as a function, we can just access it as a field. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back over here and hit save. Uh, that has a whole bunch of junk in it, but if I click on this, hit save, or if I just like go back and you notice how I'm hitting plus every time, we're not adding a whole bunch of workouts, we're just looking at the same workout multiple times. So the next thing is I wanna fix up what we're actually doing for the current workouts. So first off, we should be doing a different workout depending on what day it is. So the way we have it set up in our, let's go back to our store, is we have the, the current workout day and I'm gonna set some default values. So I'm gonna say it's gonna start as an A day and uh, the current squat weight, I'm gonna say 45. And basically you're gonna just start with just the bar 
which is 45 pounds. Um, and then barbell row and both the deadlift are going to be kind of hard to start with just the bar. So we're going to say, uh, let's maybe hopefully they have like some bumper weights that are like 10 pounds or something. So we'll say 65 pounds you'll start with. Okay. So now with these values, this is what I'm going to increment and the current squat value and all that stuff is what we're going to persist. And as the user is working out, we're going to increment these numbers. Uh, so the way we're going to do that is first off, we're going to hinge on that day. So here I'm going to say, uh, root store dot workout store. And we're going to say last workout type, and we're just going to inverse it. So we're going to say, we're going to look at what the last workout day was. If it was a, then we're now going to do a B and vice versa. So there should be B, that should be A. This way, so all this does is when we hit the plus, it's now going to toggle between A and B um, because we're checking if it's A last time, then we now want it to be a B. This logic may need to happen somewhere else, or maybe I should reword this and say like what the current workout type was, is. Um, so if the last workout was an A, the next one would be a B. No, this makes sense, I think. Uh, all right, so that's going to switch between the workout types. The next thing is to actually increment the weight and use that here. So instead of doing these weights, we're basically going to check what day it is and do a different condition. So I, again, I'm going to be hard coding this here for simplicity's sake, but uh, ideally you should probably put this in some kind of array of exercises or whatnot, uh, or maybe a condition of some sort. So we're gonna say last workout type. Um, if it was equal to B, that means today is an A day. And on A day, you're gonna do this set of exercises. Oh, and this, this, this stuff should go inside of there. All right, so we're going to say do these set of exercises. And we'll paste that in there. All right, so so what we're going to use is the current values as well. So we're going to say root store dot workout store dot. And then we're going to grab all these current values. Current barbell, current bench deadlift, squat, and overhead press. And I guess I'll move this outside of here. All right, so the name of it squat, number of sets, and then the weight here is gonna be the current squat weight, current bench press weight, and uh, I'm gonna just create a const empty sets because we're going to basically reuse this uh, in multiple places and now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say dot 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 empty sets and what this is going to do is it's going to basically just create a new instance of this array i don't know if we would have a problem with having the sets like references to the same array so that's why i want to create a new array each time just to be safe All right, and then down here, we're gonna say, actually deadlift is special, so we'll just hard code it like that. Current deadlift. And then at the bottom here, I'm basically going to just say, I'm gonna increment each one by two pounds or 2.5 pounds, I guess. So squat, 2.5. And then bench press and then deadlift. So basically what's happening is we're going to do these exercises and then we are going to increment the weight for next week uh, when we do them. Uh, and then we're going to basically copy this and do the same thing, but with different exercises on the B day. So again, you can see where we kind of have some duplication of things where it may be simpler to switch this out with some kind of looping. 
So we're gonna be doing an overhead press and a barbell row, but we still do squat. So barbell row. Empty sets, and then here, current barbell row. And then we're just rinsing and repeating overhead press here. And we're pretty much done, I think, now um, with this switching. So let's see what we just accomplished. So now when I hit a press on this, we'll get squat, bench, deadlift, and uh, we'll see what poundage we're at. Let's save this. So now squat, overhead press, barbell, we're at these pounds. Save it. And if we look at what we're gonna do next week, squat is, oh, you know what? It's 2.5 on each side, so that really, this should really be five. That's how much I wanna increment by. But you'll notice how the squat incremented there. And we got a new set of exercises. So now it's gonna oscillate between these exercises each week. And we slowly increase the weight of them and whatnot. Anyway, guys, I think that is the end of us adding features to this application. Um, in the next video, what I'm going to do is make sure the app works, um, the React Native one, and at least on the iOS emulator, and then also deploy this to Netlify. Now, there's a ton of things that we could add to this to make it better and a ton of different features. Uh, so I hope this gave you a good introduction and in how you can get started with this and a good starting framework. And I invite you, encourage you to start adding some features onto this, get an idea of how it might work, switch up the styles of things, and kind of make it your own workout application. Customize the different lifts um, and set it up if you work out to your routine.